What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna look at radio buttons for PyQt5 and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at radio buttons, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books, one time fee is just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at radio buttons. And these are radio buttons. You click on one, you get to select one thing at a time from a list. And when we click on something, we can, you know, click the button and it says mushroom. We could do something with whatever you've selected, right? So there's several different moving parts for radio buttons we need to look at. It's not very complicated, but something you're gonna use just a million times throughout your coding careers. Radio buttons are used for all kinds of different things. and that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So head over to our terminal here. I'm in my C slash PyQt5 directory. I have my virtual environment turned on and let's just open up the designer. Okay, and let's create a main win window and let's sort of resize this guy a bit. Okay, so we just want a very basic thing here. I'm gonna grab a couple of radio buttons. There's one, two, three. We're also gonna want a button. And we're also gonna want a label. So let's come down here, and grab a label. Okay, and we could just sort of play around with these a little bit if we want. I'm gonna make these bigger just so they're easier to see. Let's go size 16, 16, bear with me, 16. And same thing down here, we might as well make this big too. And while we're at it, let's also make this big. Everything's big today. Okay, so let's come to each of these and we'll resize these in a bit. But for right now, let's come down here and we want the text for this first one to say pepperoni. And we want this text for the next one to say like cheese. And we want this one to say mushroom, something like that. And for our push button, let's just say uh, pick topping. Something like that. And for this text, let's say uh, da, da, da. here, choose your topping. Okay, so now let's resize these guys. So we can click on them and come up here to geometry. And we can just click this little red arrow and boom, it will sort of auto resize to fit the text. And there we go. And let's make this a little bigger too, just for fun. I don't know. Okay, so let's sort of kind of center all these things as best we can. We don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this stuff because we don't care that much. And sort of resize this. All right, something like that. I don't know, good enough, right? So let's click on this and we have the geometry. 120, 120. 120, so these are sort of lined up, it looks like. Okay, so let's just come up here, hit form preview, just to see if we like the look of this. Okay, good enough, right? Very basic app, we've got some radio buttons we can click on, we've got a button. So, okay, looks good. Let's come up here and save this. So file, save as, and we wanna to navigate to our PyQt5 directory, and let's save this as radio.ui. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's head back over to our terminal. And we need to convert this from a .ui file to a .py file. We've done this lots of times. We just go py uic 5-x, and this is radio.ui. We want to output it, dash o, to radio.py. Okay, and now we can go python radio.py to see if this worked, and it looks like it did. Okay, we've got our basic app here. So. Let's go ahead and open this radio.py file in Sublime Text. So come over to our Sublime Text editor, go file, open file, navigate to your PyQt5 directory here, and let's look for that radio.py file. There it is. And okay, there we go. Okay, so let's come through here and let's look for that button. And so here we have radio button, radio button, push button. So there we go. And every time we click this button, we want to run a function. So let's go clicked equals, and this is gonna be lambda. This is a lowercase l. I know it kind of looks like a capital L. It's lowercase. 
Again, this is a capital L. You can see very different, right? Sublime just does that, drives me crazy. So we want to run self.select and that should work. So now we need to create this select function. And we can come down here and let's just define this. And we want to pass in self. So whenever this button gets clicked, we want to change the text to something. So our text is label. We didn't change any names. So we could go self.label.set text. Let's just say hello there, right? Let's go ahead and save this run it just to make sure that worked. So we can run Python radio.py. Now when we click this, it says hello there down there. Okay, so that works. So now what we want to do is whenever one of these is selected, we want whatever the selected thing is to appear down here. Kind of a silly thing, but this will at least show you how to do anything with the stuff that you select, right? In our case, we're just going to output it as a label. You would do in your program probably something else. You would take some action. In this case, you would, you know, run a function to set an order for a cheese pizza or whatever. But here we're just going to output it to a label just to show you how the mechanics of this thing works. So let's head back over here. And you'll notice our radio buttons are called radio button, radio button two, and radio button three, right? So instead of this, let me just take this out. We need to run some if statements to see which one of these things has been checked or not. So we can go if self dot radio button, that's our first one. And then we call is checked, right? So this will return true if it's checked. And if it is, we just want to do something. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to just put some text out that says, see the first one is pepperoni, okay? Now we could just copy this whole thing and do it two more times. So the other button we can see right here is radio button two. So we'll put radio button two. And then the next one is radio button three. And so there's pepperoni, what is it? Cheese, last one I think is mushroom. But we should check, make sure, yeah, the last one's mushroom. Okay, so that's really all there's to it. If we save this and run it, now, if we click this and then hit the button, boom, it says pepperoni. If we click this and hit the button, boom, it says cheese. If we click this and click the button, boom, it says mushroom. Pretty cool. So that's radio buttons, very simple. Now there's a few options that we can play around with that are useful. And the first one I wanna talk about is, we know that this is pepperoni. We know this is cheese and we know this is mushroom because we just built this thing. But you might not know because these buttons can change, right? The text in them can change or they may be generated automatically or something. So how do we know what the text is for each one? Well, we can do that programmatically. So instead of, let's do it for mushroom here. Instead of just typing mushroom, let's say we don't know what the text for this is. Well, we know the name of it. It's radio button underscore three and object oriented programming. So we have to put a self in front of it. So here we could just say dot text, right? So instead of typing mushroom in here, we can just do it programmatically with self dot radio button underscore three dot text. So if we save this, head back over here, come back here and run this guy one more time. Now we click here, it says mushroom, right? So that's how you get that programmatically. Now let's run this again. And you'll notice none of these are checked by default. What if you want one of them to be checked by default when the program runs or when some other action in the program happens? How do you do that? Well, we can do that. So let's come up here into our main sort of function here. This thing here gets called whenever the program runs. So whenever the program runs, we can, let's say, set default radio button to checked. So let's say we want the first one checked. That would be self dot radio button. And we want to set it to dot set checked and then pass in true. All right? This can be this can take two arguments, true or false. We want it to be true. We want it to be checked by default. So if we save this, head back over here and run it. You see now pepperoni is checked by default when we start. And if we click it, it says pepperoni. We can still navigate around. Everything still works the way it should, but pepperoni is now checked by default. So that's cool. What if we want to change the text of these? programmatically. How do we do that? Well, let's say, head back over here. Let's say when we click the cheese one, so let's come down here. 
here is the cheese one. We want to change the label itself. So we go self dot radio button underscore two dot. And just like with our text box, we can set the text for that as well. And let's say we change it to selected or something, right? So if we save this, come back over here, hit reload. Now, when we click cheese and click the button, boom, it changes to select. Now we set the size of this to only be big enough for cheese. And so the label's small, so you'll have to account for that, make your label, label bigger or resize the geometry of the thing to fit the thing. Uh, I'll let you mess with that. But that's how you can change that. Now, if we click this, these stay the same. So very cool. Maybe you want to remove the text. If we click pepperoni, we want to remove the text from these. We could do that too. That's sort of silly, but you know, we could do that. Let's come over here and I'm just going to grab this and come up here and do it two more times and set this to three. And here, let's say clear the other buttons or radio buttons. And here we could just change the text to nothing, right? So that's kind of weird, but I don't know, might be fun. <laughs> right? So if we click cheese, boom, that changes to selected. If we click pepperoni, boom, pepperoni is the only one left and these two are now empty, right? Now if we go back and click one of these, it returns nothing because there's nothing there. If we click this one, it does put something there, right? So I don't know, just weird stuff that's kind of cool. You could do all kinds of other weird things. Up here, we set the checked to true. Maybe when we click the first one, select, we want to select the second button, radio button, all right? I don't know why we would want to do that, but that's radio button underscore two. We can set it to true, right? So when we click the first one, the second one will be selected automatically. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you could. Fun with radio buttons. So here we've, cl we've clicked pepperoni. Now we click this, boom, it bops down to selected and this gets removed. So all kinds of weird stuff going on here. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you could do that. You could change the buttons that are selected programmatically. There you go. Boom, it pops back down. Click this, do it again. Boom, pops back down. I don't know, kind of weird. But if you wanted to do that, you could. So those are radio buttons. Pretty simple, not a whole lot to it. Set checked, uh, set the text, is checked. Those are the three main things that you want to play with with them. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. So it pays just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.